Hi, I'm Farhana. Thank you for joining me for this lesson on 3D trigonometry. Specifically, we're going to be focusing on using compound and double angle formulae in 3D trig problems. Before we begin, let's look at the concept map to see where we are in the syllabus. Okay, so so far we focused on solving non-right angle triangles using the sine rule, the area rule, and the cos rule. We've already done proofs and applications. We've started off with 3D problems, and now we will focus on using uh, compound and double angle formulae. Can you remember what your formulae look like? Let's just revise. So the compound angle formulae, there were four that we've learned. So cos of alpha plus beta becomes cos of alpha, cos of beta, minus sine of alpha, sine of beta. And when you have a negative value, it's the same except the sine becomes a positive. And for the sine rule, for the sine one, we have sine of alpha plus beta becomes sine alpha cos beta, and the sine remains the same, so it's plus cos alpha sine beta. And the other version is, if you have a negative here, you'll have a negative here, and sine of alpha minus beta becomes sine of alpha cos beta minus cos of alpha sine of beta. The next formula we do is a double angle formula, and they're quite easy to remember. So sine of 2 alpha is equal to 2 sine alpha cos alpha. And the cos 2 alpha for the double angle, you have three different versions. The first version is this with cos squared alpha minus sine squared alpha, or 2 cos squared alpha minus 1. And the final one, the final version, is 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. Okay, can you remember which rule to use when? We've done this in the previous lessons. Let's do a quick recap. Okay, so again, if the triangle is right angled and if it involves angles, we're going to use trig rules, trig ratios, sine, cos, and tan. And if it only involves using sines, um, so, uh, sides, then we're going to use theorem of Pythagoras. So if it's angles, we're going to end up using uh, Sokatoa, and if there's no angles, we end up using Pythagoras. That's for right angle triangles. If the triangle is not right angle triangle, we've got to look to see if there's a matching uh, pair of angles and sides. If we've got one full pair, that means an angle and its matching side, then we can use the sine rule. And if we don't have a matching pair of uh, angles and side, then we have to use the cos rule. And again, remember, sine rule is used when we have angle, angle, side, or side, side, angle. And cos rule, when we have side, angle, side, but you have to have the included angle, or we can find an angle if we've given three sides of a triangle. Right, so let's look at our first example. They gave us A, B, and C are three points in the same horizontal plane, D, A, um, is a vertical cliff, so, and we have the angle of elevation from B to A uh, to the top of the cliff is theta, so they're talking about this angle here, the angle of elevation from the horizontal upwards to D is theta, and they've given us that ABC and ACB are both alpha, so this angle and this angle are both alpha. Okay, the distance between B and C is k meters, and they tell us to prove that AD is equal to k tan theta over 2 cos alpha. Now, again, the easiest thing is going to look at your triangles. As it stands, we look like we're only dealing with the three triangles, the two vertical triangles, uh, the two triangles in the vertical planes, triangle A, B, and D, which is right angled at A, okay? In fact, we don't have any information about this triangle as it stands. We're probably not going to use it. So we have this triangle that's right angled, okay? And then we have the triangle BAC on the ground. And if you notice this triangle, we already have two angles. Okay, so we've got two angles. We've got one side, but we don't have a matching pair of sides, which means at the moment we cannot use cos rule or sine rule. But because we have two angles, we know it's pretty simple to calculate that angle. And once we calculate that angle, and that angle we know will be 180 minus alpha, minus that alpha that's sitting at both bases, at the base of that triangle. So in other words, we will have one pair of matching angles and side. 
then we can use the sine rule to solve that triangle. Okay, so they want us to actually find, they actually want us to find AD. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna start off by looking at AD. So AD belongs to this triangle here, okay? But in this triangle, we only have one piece of information. So we're definitely missing a second piece of information. But if I can find AB, okay, using this triangle here, BAC, the bottom triangle, the, the horizontal triangle, that means then I can find AB, and once I find AB, then I've got AB and theta, then I could find the side, um, I could rewrite AD in terms of theta and alpha and K. So we have a strategy, let's start putting that into action. Okay, so in triangle ABD, we're gonna start off with here. So in this triangle that's right angled here, we've got theta and we wanna rewrite AD. So AD is the opposite side, okay, over, we, we're gonna find AB. So, so in other words, 10 of theta is equal to AD over AB. Okay, we're gonna rearrange that quickly and when we rearrange that, we multiply through and we're gonna end up with AD is equal to AB times 10 of theta. Now remember, we're going to leave this for a bit because we know we wanna find AD. We're going to see if we can now find AB. So again, remember when we came to this triangle, we said AB belongs to this triangle here and we've, we've got the opposite side and remember we said we can find another matching pair, another full pair, so let's do that. Okay, so in triangle ABC, we have BAC is equal to 180 minus alpha, minus alpha. And so BAC is equal to 180 degrees minus two alpha. Okay, so now we're gonna use the sine rule. So again, remember, because we wanna find, we're looking for AB. So we're gonna start off with AB using the sine rule. So AB and the angle across it is alpha, so AB, over sine of alpha must equal to, now because they've given us k, we're gonna use k, and the side across k, uh, sorry, the angle across k is this one, the one that we calculated earlier, so we're gonna put that into our equation. So 180 minus two alpha. So let's see what we've done again. We, start, we've, we, we were looking to find, um, we were looking to find AB, because we wanted to find AB to substitute into here. So we said AB over sine of the angle across it, alpha, is equal to, we used this matching side that we had here, A and K, um, um, sorry, uh, angle A and the side K, so it was K over the side of, um, the sine of a, 180 minus two alpha. Okay, now we need to do a bit of algebra. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, we need to do a bit of algebra before we do anything else. Okay, so now um, let's begin by first um, multiplying through by sine of alpha. So we're gonna multiply through by sine of alpha there. And let me just grab my pen. Okay, so we're gonna multiply both sides. Oh, sorry about that. Um, okay, we're gonna multiply both sides by sine of alpha. And there we go, we've multiplied both sides by sine of alpha. Now, this again becomes a reduction. This is again second quadrant. And sine in the second quadrant, we know we can simplify sine of 180 minus two, th two alpha. Okay, so it's two alpha. And remember, because this is second quadrant, sine is positive, so it's just gonna equal to sine of two alpha. Okay, so this whole, this whole um, expression is just gonna become sine of two alpha. And Okay, so now we have an expression for AB, and AB is equal to K sine alpha over sine two of theta. Now remember, we started off where we wanted to substitute AB to find AD. So let's go back to where we started off. We said AD was equal to AB tan theta at the beginning, and now we've just proved that AB is equal to K sine alpha over two theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put this in place of a, B there. Okay, and there we go. I've put that in place of A, B there. Now I just need a bit of algebra to figure out what's happening. 
and there's one more thing you'll notice here that we've got a sine of two theta, and we know from our double angle formulas what must, sorry, two alpha, what must be sine of two alpha? It'll become two sine alpha cos alpha. So we're gonna change that denominator to be two sine alpha cos alpha, like that. And this 10, we've just taken it to the top to multiply it. And so we've got k times sine of alpha, 10 of theta, over two sine alpha cos alpha. Remember, we got this from, we've changed that. We've changed the sine of two alpha into two sine alpha cos alpha. Now that will cancel out. And what are we left with? K, 10 theta over two cos alpha. And that's exactly what they asked us to find. Okay, it's time for an air break. Please join us just after this. <laughs> 